Hey everyone, um, sorry I'm unable to be with you today, um, but I don't want us to get behind in lab. I have um, had planned for us today to work on safety and um, also to do the Charles Law Lab. And I had planned for next week for us to do um, the Dumas method, which is using the um, ideal gas law relationship to calculate molar mass in addition to doing an Excel tutorial. So I decided to, um, since I'm un unable to be with you today, for us to stay on track um, to swap um, the two activities and put um, make the first assignment that's due to be um, the overview of safety and um, the Excel tutorial together. So the first thing that you're required to do is to watch the safety videos that have been posted and follow the directions in the assignment that was given with that which is to write a summary of the um, <clears throat> safety guidelines in your um, lab notebook. The second thing part of that was understanding how to read and interpret a chemical, commu chemical communication sheet which is the safety data sheet which gives us a lot of very important information about the chemicals that we use. Many times we are we don't respect our um, chemicals enough with their potential hazards and um, we need to always be abreast before we start an experiment about what those potential hazards are and what uh, we would need to do if an accident were to occur in order to prevent harm or um, from from um, happening. So um, this part is the Excel tutorial and what I want us to do is to use this as both a Excel tutorial and a reinforcement to um, show how some of those graphs that we examined in class the other day um, arise. And so basically when you do your Charles Law experiment you're going to be required to do an Excel graph that will accompany that experiment. And so what I hope to accomplish here is to um, give you a refresher of how those Excel um, manipulations occur. So um, as a scientist, we uh, very often will see, we'll use Excel to process our data, to explore the link between um, properties, and to plot relationships so that we can gain further information. Um, <clears throat> so um, I guess that's all I want to tell you before we get started. Um, before I move right into the Excel tutorial, your lab write-up on the safety verb portion of the assignment, your grade will be based on how thorough you are with explaining those details. And also, um, you know, the second part of that, which is where you write 1 through 10 the um, identify the parts of the safety data sheet and um, the types of information contained within each section but your completeness and your thoroughness um, of those explanations will be what your grade is based on okay so now let's move into Excel I, I hesitated to do this tutorial um, um, via this video because I really wanted to be with you and do it with you in the chemistry library where um, the uh, <clears throat> Microsoft Office um, operating system, Microsoft uh, Windows operating system is used a Windows based computer but at this point in time I have to do it from where I am now but I use a Mac and some of these details may be a little bit different but the basics um, should be the same. If there are any problems, confusions, issues, difficulties, please feel free um, to to let me know. I encourage you, please let me know where you're having struggles, if there are any. Hopefully this will serve as a review instead of an introduction to most of you. Okay, alright, so let's get started. So what we're going to do here is take this problem that's listed here, and um, I'm going to go through the way that the graphs are plotted, and then your assignment will be to reproduce this type of plot using um, the set of data that's posted on Blackboard. Okay, so it says that an experiment was performed to measure the variation of pressure 
for gas as the volume has changed. The experiment was performed at two different temperatures and the data is given below. Okay, so um, basically we have two sets of data. The volume stayed the same, remained constant, and at each volume we measured the temperature at pressure, I'm sorry, measure the, the pressure at temperature 1 and we measure the pressure at temperature 2. So for each set of data we're going to have a separate graph. Remember any um, relationship where we plot a series of data where the temperature is held constant we call it an isotherm. So basically what we're going to be doing is plotting um, two separate isotherms for this experiment. So you first determine what we will have on the y-axis. In this case, what's going to be on the y-axis is going to be our pressure. The thing that we hold constant is always on the x-axis. So these are the experimental measurements that we obtain, which are on the y-axis. And we're going to highlight them. And um, we'll go to chart. Um, you may be able to go to insert chart which will be um, probably more universal between the two platforms, the Mac and the, um, the Windows-based computer. But anyway, um, you're going to select the scatter chart. And we want to do a mark scatter because what we want to do, we want to see each individual point as, we, um, as it's plotted. If we do a smooth line, we would get the relationship, the trend, but we wouldn't see each individual point plotted. So that would be useful for when we're doing um, experiments where we're required um, to maybe take, uh, let's say, some spectroscopy data and plot a spectrum over um, as the wavelength varies for a sample. But for right now, we're going to look at just doing a mark scatter plot. So what the system does is it goes ahead and gives us a preliminary um, plot of the graph. And so what we're going to need to do now is go and define what those x values actually are. It gives us a general trend, but now we have to define our x values. So with the chart selected, we can either go right here and click select to define our x axis, or we can go over to chart and say source data which allows us to be able to look at this little box right here which is empty click this little box right here and go and define the range where our X values are located okay once we do that that should give us the accurate plot for this particular graph if this is series 1 and we know that this isotherm is done at temperature 1. We can go ahead and put the name of that in here. And we can say temperature um, equal to 373K or whatever the temperature is. Let's see, what is it? 313K. So we could make it a shorter legend. T is equal to 313K. And that way, when... We have more than one series on the same graph, you will be able to use this legend here and say, okay, the blue dots correspond to the data that was taken at 313 um, Kelvin. It automatically named the chart the same thing. We're going to change that chart title. So we can go ahead and do that or we can wait till later. But let's go ahead and do that. Let's change the chart title to... Um, pressure, volume, chart, or whatever. In this particular case, um, this is just a, a whatever you're actually reporting is what you will have named the chart. Pressure, volume, relationships. Let's just call it that this for right now. Okay, so. We've got our legend, which tells us that the blue dots represent the data that we put in at 313K. And now, 
just like we saw, showed in class when I did that rough graph that showed you the pressure versus volume relationship and I showed you we could have more than one on the same plot. Let's go ahead and plot the next data series on the same plot. So I don't really know what your shortcut ones are in Windows so let's go ahead and just go up to chart and say add data. So we still will have these very same x-axis values for every new data series that we add. So therefore, when we add data to this chart, we're simply going to go and click the box that lets us go and select an additional data range for the Y values and select that data range. Click the box to get back to the dialog box and then we can say OK because this is our new value. OK, so that gives us the second plot at the different temperature. So this is isotherm for T2 which is 414K and so in order to name that series we could actually go in and look at our source data again and go down to series 2 and we can name it um, T is equal to 414k. At the same time, okay, so now when we look at the graph, we can identify based on the color and the shape of the marker which data series we're actually talking about, whether we're talking about the data that was collected at 414. Kelvin or at 313 Kelvin. Okay, so that's how we put the two um, series, the two data series on the same chart. But this chart means nothing without us defining what the x axis values represent and what the y axis values represent. So we can either go in and Pick one of the predefined um, layouts that Excel has in order to go in and put those values in. But since we've already gotten started, we already have pretty much um, our um, structure here. So we already have our title, we already have our axes labeled and all that good stuff. So let's just go and um, select uh, on chart layout, let's just go ahead and individually go in and put in each of our axis titles. So for our horizontal axis title, which is our X axis, we can say let's put the title below the axis. And we know that the title is um, volume. And we want to, in parentheses, represent what unit that volume is measured in. On every axis, when you represent what it is, you want to put the unit that the measurement was taken in. Okay, so that was our horizontal axis. Um, it's useful for us when we actually are going to take this chart and insert it into a report or, um, or, or print it out to put in your lab notebook. We always want to make sure that when we do that, that all of the data is legible and able to be um, viewed um, easily. So we want to make sure our font sizes and all that are big enough and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But for right now let's go ahead and put our um, other axis in. So now let's look at the vertical axis. Now you're going to have different ver variations for your vertical axis. You can put it where your letters go down um, one on top of the other but for the most part we usually use a rotated vertical axis in um, graphs itself. So okay, so um, we're going to put <clears throat> our axis title in here, and that's going to be the pressure, and it's measured in atmospheres. So as you can see, if I was actually if I were actually going to present this, I might want to clean it up and make it cuter, or make it um, more. Um, more attractive, so should I say. So we can format all of this stuff. We can play around with in a format 
to make our we can change the number of um, death points after the decimal point that we have here we can go into let's see to format the axis we can have a lot of different um, options that we can have once we right click on format the axis we can tell it how much of the axis to display it's already automatically defined here um, but if we only want to look at a portion of that graph if we only want to look at um, that graph from um, two atmospheres or from one atmosphere to two atmospheres then we would only select that portion of the graph to display and we would only have those two data points on the graph we can um, format our text boxes our um, our scale um, how many data points to show after I'm sorry how many decimal places to show etc etc when we go to number um, we can say okay we only want to show one decimal place and sometimes depending upon um, what type of data you're reporting sometimes it's much more um, sleek or cleaner to display one decimal point instead of two but since we have a lot of data that actually are is less than one then we'll go ahead and keep the two but you can do um, a lot of different option changes in this menu and that is both for the x-axis and for the y-axis um, here you can right click and ask it to format the axis title and so therefore you'll be able to if the dialog box ever comes up you'll be able to change the font and the size of it and so for the most part knowing that you want it to be very visible you might want to change the font size to make it a little bit larger and you can do the same thing with those numbers on the y-axis and the x-axis in the dialog box I showed you right before the last one so in the format axis um, menu so here um, once again we're going to go to the format axis title menu and we're going to increase the font size here just to make it um, more professional looking okay so if we don't want our axis to be over here if we want to stretch our chart out a little bit more we can go that's not our axis that's our legend I'm sorry if we don't want our legend to be over here on the right we could also go and um, select where we would prefer our legend to end up we want it to overlap overlap um, our chart we can put it there if we want it at the bottom we can select bottom etc etc so right now this is a pretty decent looking graph um, of the pressure volume relationship um, for all of these measurements so what if we want to do that plot that we showed in class the other day where we could actually use um, the pressure volume data and the slope that we would get from a line using that data in order to calculate something so this chart right here um, gives us pressure on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis what if we want to put pressure on the um, y-axis and volume one over volume on the x-axis and there's two ways we can do this um, I'm going to show you my preferred way that I do it. You could start all over and graph all of that data over again and then um, go back and put your titles and your axes in and all that stuff. But if all we're changing is the x-axis values, then all we need to change are these numbers right here. So what I like to do is to take this sheet that 
this graph is contained in, right click on it and do a move or copy. And so we're going to create a copy of this. So we want to move it to the very end. So now my new sheet is identical to the sheet we just copied it from. And so now on this one, we're going to do the graph where we plot the pressure versus one over the volume. Now this is where um, your Excel skills can, you know, the more you practice different uh, manipulations, the better you'll get. But since we know that the volume here is one, and we know that the data within this particular section is the data that is actually plotted in this graph, we know that the one over volume data needs to remain in this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this volume information and paste it right next to the original information. So now I'm going to do a calculation in this column right here because this is the column that's actually represented in this graph. I, I hope I'm not confusing you and I hope I'm not saying that too many times but I want you to make sure that you know that the source data where the information that's plotted on this graph is coming from that we already selected in the other sheet and that was copied over to this sheet is within the highlighted area. It's actually within this area right here. So, uh, what we want to do now, since we want to plot one over volume, we copy the volume over here. And now, in this particular, in this column, we can do a calculation where we say we start out with the equal sign, which tells Excel that we're about to do a calculation. So, we say equals, and then we want to do one over volume. So this calculation we're about to do is 1 divided by the volume. So equals 1 divided by, which is represented by a slash, and the volume that we have is in this cell to the left. So that calculation will give us 1 over the volume. And so now we go select that cell. We hover over it until it has a little black plus sign, and now we copy that formula down to the bottom. And as you can see, 1 over 2 is, one, is 0.5, 1 over 3 is 0.33. So now our data has updated and changed, and our um, graph has updated and changed to reflect that change. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All we did was, this is no longer volume in milliliters, this is now one over volume in milliliters. So now we come over to our axis and we want to format our axis, format the text here. And so, Oh no, we don't we want to change the text. So we can either go to source data, but I'm just accustomed to click it in the box and saying one over volume. So now that's our chart. We've got a relationship between pressure and one over volume, which is the relationship that gives us the straight line. So Here's a question here, I'm going to color it back in, that we want to look at, that we can answer using this data now. So what if we want to calculate the number of moles of gas at temperature 1, at 300 and, which is 313 Kelvin? 
Remember, we know that the equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus b. And so if our p is our y-axis, our m, which is our slope, is in rt, which is what's held constant in this relationship. On our x-axis, we have 1 over v. And our y-intercept, our, um, y as we can see, is 0. So what we would need in order to do this calculation is to find out what is the slope of each one of these lines. So in order to get the slope, we can insert a trend line here. So we would go, and let's do it for both data series. Let's do it for both series. Um, so we're going to select the series by clicking on one of the data points. If you only see one data point lit up, that means you've only selected that point and you need to click off of it and click again until all of the um, points on that data series are highlighted. Then we're going to go to um, chart and then we want to say add a trend line. Okay, so a trend line is also called a linear regression line sometimes. But when we add the trend line, we, this is a straight line here, so we want it to be a linear line. Okay, so we click linear, and now we have to go and define a couple of more options. So the options that we're going to have is that we want the intercept to be zero because based on our definition we had the other day, and based on this equation that we see right here, the y-intercept is zero. We want to see what the equation of the line is on the chart. And on down the line, when we start looking at um, statistical treatment of data, we're also going to want to display our r-square value on the chart. And that r-square value, the closer it is to 1, the more... Um, agreement you have between your data. So we won't display the r square value this time, but that's what we would do in order to do that. So we want to do our trend line here, and we're not going to go forward or backward. If we know the slope, we can forecast this line as for forward as many um, periods as we want to, or backward as many periods as we want to, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to um, just let the trend line um, rest on the first and last data points with the exception of the fact that we have set the intercept to zero. For the line itself, you can define what it looks like. For this line, since it's with the, um, with the, um, the, the red colored series, we can go ahead and make it red. We can tell it how big how wide, um, what weight to put it, etc., etc. But for right now, I think that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and leave it red. And now we've got our um, our equation on the chart, which is what we need for this series. Okay. So let's now go. And we can actually grab this legend and kind of move it out of the way because it's kind of in the way for this particular graph. So as you can see, the legend was updated. Um, when we put that trend line in, the legend updated itself to show, okay, we've got the data points for each one of these, but we also have the... Um, um, <laughs> the line, the linear line, so it also shows us a legend of what the line represents. And that line represents the trend line for the first series, which is the temperature is equal to 414 series. Okay, so sorry guys, I have a terrible headache and I'm about to get worn out with all this talking, but I'm going to keep going. Um, let's do this one last thing. Um, okay. So we're going to do the same thing for this series. 
We're going to click on a point until all of the data is highlighted. We're going to go to Chart, Add Trend Line. We're going to select the type to be linear. Our options, we want to make sure that our intercept is set at zero. And we're going to go ahead and color our line, um, which uh, a color that's similar to the data point. We're not going to change the weight or anything. And now you see we've got a second line um, that represents that second data series. I didn't, though, um, tell it to put the equation of the line on the chart, which is what we need. So now, instead of clicking on a data series, this mistake actually gives me the opportunity to show you something, so that's okay. We're going to click on the trend line itself, and sometimes this is tricky. So with the trend line selected, we want to right-click on it and say Format the Trend Line. And so when we do that, we go back to Options, and now we can tell it to display the equation of the line on the chart. And it did so, and I'm just going to move it over to where um, it's right here. So now that we have the equation of the line on the chart, this equation represents um, Y is equal to M x plus b, and since our b is 0, y here is just equal to mx. So we know that m is the same thing as the slope. Sorry, I set this up. <clears throat> and since m is the same thing as that the slope is, <coughs> um, here, um, M is the same thing as NRT, which is our constant in our equation. So NRT is equal to the slope. So the slope in this case is 2.3594. Okay, why? Sorry. M. The slope is equal to nRT, which is equal to <clears throat> which is equal to two point three five nine four. Okay. So, if 2.3594 is equal to nRT, and we want to solve for n, we can do that because we know that n then <clears throat> would simply be equal to 2.3594. divided by RT. Okay. <clears throat> Crap, I thought you do that. Alright, so now we just plug in what RT is. So I'm just going to bring this down. Okay, so that means that two point 3594 divided by, and let's replace R with its actual value, which is 0 0.08206 times the temperature, which we know is 313 Kelvin. <clears throat> then um, that's what our equation would look like and now I'm just going to ask Excel to do this calculation for me and in order to do that all I have to do now since I've set it up is go put an equal sign in front of it and tell it that it is a formula. 
that it doesn't like my formula. Oh, I put the Kelvin in there. Let me go and take the Kelvin out. It doesn't want to see letters. It only wants to see numbers. Okay. I don't know what its problem is now. Equals 2.3594. I'm going to put a bracket around this to separate out the denominator from the numerator. It still doesn't like it. What is it trying to suggest that I do here? 2.35 Oh, sorry guys. Um, what I needed to remind you of. Okay, okay, we got that. Um, when I set it up, I was doing it so that you could look at it um, as you would have it on paper. But when we put it in Excel, when we multiply something, we always have to have an asterisk to represent the multiplication sign. A slash represents the division sign, and an asterisk um, represents a multiplication operation. So, in order to make this be a mathematical operation, we first put the equal sign there. We can leave the um, slat, the divisor sign, but we want to make sure that all of this is in the denominator. So we need to enclose it in double brackets, in double parentheses. So we put in parentheses. The first parentheses represents what's in the entire denominator. The second parentheses represents the beginning of the first term. And then between these two, we need to put our multiplication symbol. And so that value that we get here is equal to the number of moles of gas that we calculated to be present in this sample using this data. So if we take the pressure versus volume, if we have a container and we let that gas expand to fill that container to one milliliter and we measure the pressure and then we let the gas expand to two milliliters and measure the pressure let the gas expand to three etc etc and then we plot the data knowing that the slope that we get when we plot one over that volume equals to NRT and knowing what our temperature value is and knowing what our gas constant R is we can then use that plot to calculate um, um, an unknown value in this case we use it to calculate the N. Now remember um, for all of the other gas laws we looked at the relationships between um, the things that we held constant and the two variables that depended on one another and so um, you could do this similar type of plot and um, determine unknown values using the slope of those plots but the slope of those plots would always depend upon what your constant is when we set that graphic relationship up where we show the relationship between y is equal to mx plus b and show what the equation for a line on each one of those charts would represent. So what I want you to do is reproduce these two charts that I've shown you how to draw. I want you to reproduce the pressure versus volume relationship here. And then I want you to copy that chart just like I did and represent the pressure versus one over volume and then calculate the number of moles in the gas um, at the specified temperature. And so 
the assignment that you're going to have that requires you to do this is going to be posted right after this video on Blackboard. So I want you to take that data series, take that data that I actually give you in that assignment and reproduce these same two graphs and print them out um, and bring them to me um, as part of your first assignment. Um, okay, so reproduce those two graphs, calculate the number of moles of gas is going to be your assignment and I'm going to give you a completely separate set of data um, to do that with. If there are any questions, issues, or concerns, please let me know. I pray that I'm able to be back on campus tomorrow. I am feeling extremely bad right now, and I do apologize that I'm not able to be there. Um, I try not to get too deep in all that, but um, just let me know by email if you need to or in class on Friday. We're going to finish Chapter 1, so I will definitely be there. Um, to do that because I know that we've got to keep moving in class. So I hope that everybody was able to do their um, 